Hi, I'm David Lawrence, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about and demonstrate pre-prosthetic exercises ranging from post-operative, appropriate in the first few days to weeks after surgery, and focused on just range of motion and simple motor activation into basic exercises that are focused on motor activation to motor control, and then ultimately advanced exercises that take the patient from motor control into true strength work. When establishing pre-prosthetic exercises, there are three primary concerns. One is range of motion is more important than strength. Number two, modified closed chain exercises are going to give you the greatest functional impact for your patient. And all exercise prescription should be gait specific. That means functioning towards what the patient wants to do in the future. So from the beginning, the first is range of motion is more important than strength. If we can help a patient maintain full range through the joints, uh, remaining joints, the hip or knee joint, then we can get them stronger through functional activities and exercise in the future. But if we've got a good, strong contracture, plenty of strength and not a lot of range, that's gonna limit their gait cycle always in the future and very difficult to get rid of. Second of all, clo modified closed chain. We obviously know that the foot is gone so there's not the actual closed chain, but the muscles of the lower extremity work best in the closed chain. So by creating a modified closed chain system, which you'll see in our exercises, we are using the body weight as a weight in a safe, effective manner. And that leads right into exercise should be specific to what the patient wants to do, which is walk. So if they wanna walk in the future, we wanna look at where are the muscles and the joints, angles for each aspect of gait, and how do you exercise those muscles and those joint angles appropriate to what the patient wants to do, which is walk. We're gonna start with our three most important post-operative exercises. The first is simply having the patient from a supine position, having them reach across their body, drop the knee, and learn how to roll to the sound side. This is the position they need to be in to be able to transfer then out of bed. So it's a great drill to work on anyway on the bed mobility. The exercise then is simply coming in here, supporting the residual limb, having them comfortably come into flexion as far as they can, and then back into extension as far as they can, gently. They're not trying to really reach hard or cause pain, just simply keep that hip joint lubricated by moving it through as much range as possible with a focus on extension. How far back can he reach? And then gently, how far forward can he come? I'm not pushing on him, I'm not pressing, I'm not caught trying to create range. I want him to feel comfortable. Slowly, I can just take my hands away, help stabilize him a little bit, and the patient's gonna be doing this every hour at least, rolling to their sound side, which is a good functional drill, and then gently moving that residual limb back and forth through as much pain-free as extension as they can get and into as much flexion as possible. The second exercise postoperatively is working on motor activation for the glutes. Now what you need is some sort of surface to push against. As we're gonna be working on exercises, you're gonna start with a patient at the lowest level with something very thin, very soft. Maybe slowly move it up to a little bit thicker, and ultimately, I like to use a foam roller on a lot of our exercises. But for postoperatively, the best thing to do is something nice and soft, and what you're gonna slide could just be a pillow in the hospital bed that you're gonna slide in behind the residual limb. All I'm gonna ask the patient to do at this point in time is tighten up their backside muscles until they feel just a little bit of pressure into that, um, the towel roll or, or towel or pillow or whatever you have underneath them. A little bit of tightening. I got my hand on his glutes so I can feel like tightening, but that's all. He's not lifting up at all. He's not trying to press down. He's not trying to crush the towel roll. Just simply squeeze into it, feel his glutes activate, right? We wanna activate those glutes as much as possible. That's gonna give us the, the future range of motion and strength we need to go through the gait cycle. That's also gonna keep that hip lubricated and functioning. And that reciprocal inhibition is gonna help shut down the hip flexors, which are tight, gonna be the tightest problem in the future, right? Hip flexion contractures. So we wanna fire the muscles opposite of the muscles that we know the contracture is gonna be in. Our third post-operative exercise is working on motor activation of the adductors, right? We've worked on range of motion, we've worked on glute activation, and we were, wanna work on adductor activation. So I take my same pillow or soft uh, towel roll, put it between the legs, and I want the patient just to gently squeeze in until they feel a little bit of tension, and that's it. 
and release it. Squeeze in, I feel the adductors tighten a little bit, no pain, no crush, just light. Why? I'm activating the adductors, really important, because it's gonna reciprocally inhibit the abduction, right? We're gonna, every patient's gonna end up with a flexion, abduction, external rotation, contracture potential. So we wanna deal with that from the very beginning, working on the opposite muscles for motor activation, and then we'll ultimately get those muscles stronger in the future. We're now going into basic level exercises. We are gone from just motor activation, post-operatively, to get range of motion and keep the muscles activated or working in the, in the right manner into basic level exercises that are progressing the patient into motor control. That means not only turn the muscle on, but begin to use that muscle. Remember, these muscles have been reattached in a different way uh, than they're used to. The good news is those muscles can function, but they have to be asked to. So the first exercise is the glutes, right? We need that, that major power muscle. You can create a thicker towel roll like this. Very simple. Most people have a bath towel around their house or a bit of a beach towel. And or what I like to use is cut up an old foam roller. It's a perfect size. Put the foam roller underneath the residual limb right in this manner. And what I'm going to ask the patient to do at this point is to press down into that towel roll and lift the hips up off the mat. So at this point, he completely clears the mat. Go ahead and lift up. Holds up there for about a five count. Four, three, two, one, and comes down. So he's really getting that glute activated and good motor control to go through the whole gait cycle. Remember, we talked about exercise. It's important to look at the gait cycle. What is the gait cycle? About 20 degrees of hip flexion, which is where he starts this exercise at the bottom. This is about 20 degrees, and it goes through, when do the glutes work in the gait cycle? Through whatever extension range the patient has. So he's working exactly how he needs to work in the gait cycle. On an advanced level exercise now, he's in the same position, it's very simple. All he needs is a towel roll or a rolled up foam pad. He's on a nice flat surface. He can go from a basic to an advanced exercise by simply taking the, the contralateral limb, lifting it up, holding it in the air, then push down into that same, there you go, base and lift those hips up as high as possible. Hold for three, two, one, and come down. And again, press down into that foam roller, lift as high as you possibly can. Now he's taking his entire body weight, lifting it off the mat, holding all that load on the residual limb, which is exactly what he's gonna to need to do in the gait cycle with advanced activities in the future. Our next exercise is working the adductors. If we work the extensors through the gait cycle from full flexion to extension range, we wanna work the adductors and they work in mid stance. To do that, all we need now is a towel and a stool. Very cheap, inexpensive little plastic stool. We're gonna slide it all the way up in on top of his lower leg and lay the residual limb on top of it. From here, I wanna put the residual limb into a full extended position straight down. That's a mid stance position in future walking. All I want the patient to do at this point in time is squeeze down into that stool and lift his body weight off the mat a little bit. Three, two, one, and relax. So he's squeezing into the stool, using those adductors, keeping it in neutral position. Three, two, one, and relax, because that neutral position is mimicking mid-stance, which is when you really need those adductors to work. If we want to take this exercise to an advanced exercise, the advanced exercise is simply adding more body weight. So what the patient's gonna do now is lift the bottom leg up against the bottom of the stool, then squeeze down into there and try to really lift those hips up. You'll see a patient, even a strong patient like Keith here, is working hard. This is not an easy exercise. And come back down, and again, leg up, and then squeeze, ah, oh, nice. Three, two, one, and release. Again, Repetitions on all these are really at your choice. I like somewhere around 10 to 15 repetitions. Kind of depends on the patient. A small amount of hold time to make sure they have control, but most importantly is alignment of the body. Our next exercise is working on the hip flexors. Most of your patients, if you look at the situation, you might say, gosh, there's no way my patient has the hip extension range to use a towel roll or use a foam roller like this. And many patients do need to start with just simply a towel folded up or a thin foam roller and work their way up to, uh, from a towel roll, up to a foam roller like this. But if you can, it's a great position for them just to passively lie here in extension and get some hip flexor stretch. Very helpful for the transfemoral amputee. The exercise is simply this. 
He is going to press down into that towel roll and lift his hips off the mat. Three, two, one, and relax. When he relaxes, he's going to really try to drop those hips all the way into the mat to get a really good stretch. Because right after a maximum contraction, you're going to get maximum relaxation. So press down in and get that lift. Three, two, one, and then relax and stretch down into the mat. Now, if you want to make this exercise an advanced exercise, he is going to simply lift his other leg off the mat first, then press down in and lift both hips off the mat. Four, three, two, one, and relax. He's using his entire body weight. He's working the hip flexors just where they work in the gait cycle from whatever extension range he has into about 15, 20 degrees of flexion. Try one more time. If you can lift up, press. Whatever hip flexion range he has, that's what he needs to go through swing phase and bring it down and relax. And that's the normal motion for the hip flexors through the gait cycle. Our next exercise is working the AB ductors or abductors. You need your stool with a towel and a towel roll or foam roller. What you're gonna do is put this guy in front, take the sound limb, put it up on top, and just rest as it has a support system. From there, the residual limb needs to be pulled into full extension because the abductors work where? In mid-stance of the gait cycles when you really need them. The patient's one gonna, going to want to be in flexion at this point in time, so they have to really think about getting that leg back in extension. If you're taking your towel roll, we're gonna slide it right underneath the residual limb with that leg in as much extension as possible. Keep, and this exercise is gonna simply press down that towel roll and lift his hips up off the mat. Three, two, one and relax all the way down. Press in, working those abductors, using his body weight as the weight in the correct range that he needs them to walk in the future and all the way down. If you wanna make this an advanced exercise, you simply take this towel roll away, excuse me, take this stool away. Keith comes into a full extended position. He is gonna press down into that towel roll and lift up into the air, three, two, one, and relax. Gonna adjust this position a little bit. Keith, bring that guy up a little bit more. Extend all the way out straight. Press down into that towel roll and lift his whole body weight off the mat. Three, two, one, and relax. And one more, fully extended. Press down into that towel roll, lift up into the air. Three, two, one, and relax. Next exercise is really working on patient's core control, starting to bring some strength in as well as rotational control of the pelvis. So the basic level of exercise is he's gonna do affectionately what I like to call the bedpan exercise. He's simply gonna squeeze, push down into the mat, and lift his hips up a little bit off the mat. That is a great exercise just to get some core strength, not putting strain on the residual limb at all, just getting to come off the mat. Bring it back down. The advanced level of this exercise is what Keith is gonna focus on is bridging up on the one side while leaving his residual limb side hanging down. And then he's gonna take and rotate his hip to the ceiling as high as he possibly can with just the hip, really getting a good anterior pelvic rotation. And then and allow the posterior rotation to occur and then lose the bridge or go all the way down. So if you repeat that a couple of times, he's gonna come up in posterior rotation. This is stance phase, coming out of stance phase on this side. Swing phase is about anterior pelvic rotation. So he's creating swing phase while in stance on his contralateral limb. Allow the posterior rotation to go back down to have control and bring down the bridge. So one more. This is a great exercise where you're lifting up, working on transverse plane pelvic rotation, which is really important to a smooth gait cycle, while also working on core strength and control. All right, with this exercise, we're looking at a post-operative exercise that's gonna focus on range of motion and functional skills. All the patient's gonna do is basically reach across the chest and roll to their side. That's gonna put them on their side. This is the position needed for them to transfer out of bed, but we're gonna stop at that position, that functional skill, and then work on mobility or range within the leg. So all the patient's gonna do, you're gonna ask them while supporting that residual limb in a comfortable position to flex the knee and hip to a comfortable place, not pain, just comfortable. Come back and extend the knee and extend the hip, extend the hip, I should say, just to a comfortable place. Again, the patient should not be grimacing in pain. This should be a nice, comfortable motion, each time trying to go a little bit farther if they can. We're keeping the hip and knee joint lubricated and extended as much as they can while working on that rolling to side functional skill. 
you can then step away from this and have the patient work on this themselves, just rolling forward, bringing that knee forward into full flexion, wherever they're comfortable, and then coming all the way back into full extension, as much hip and knee extension as they can establish and repeat. So the second of our three postoperative exercises are simply putting a soft towel pillow behind the residual limb, above where the incision line would be, asking the patient to simply tighten their quad muscles so you can feel that muscle tighten, tighten their butt muscles so they put a little pressure into that towel roll, and that's it, and then relax. So they're just going to squeeze the quad, squeeze the butt muscles a little bit, feel the pressure down into that towel, and relax. Should not cause pain. That's simply activating the quad, which is going to help us fight a, hip, a knee flexion contracture, which is a problem for patients, and tighten the glute, which is going to help us fight a hip flexion contracture, which is another problem for our patient. Making this a basic level exercise from a post-operative is we go from a thin towel roll to more of a foam roller, something a little bit thicker. The same basic principle. We're going to have the patient, though, bend their knee this time and put it here. Have her tighten that glute muscle or that quad muscle on the top, the glute muscle, and press and lift those hips right up off the mat. So she's basically pressing down, really getting some good glute and quad activation, pressing into that towel roll and come back down. So tighten the quad, tighten the glute, press down hard into that foam roller, and lift your hips right off the mat. So her abductors are going to be kicking in. Her adductors are going to be kicking in, her abdominals, and, and as well as mainly the glutes and the quad. If the patient says, well, this is getting easy for me, and they want to make it a little bit more challenging, they simply take this leg and extend it out straight and do the same thing. Tighten the quad, tighten the glute, press down in as hard as they can, try and lift those hips off the mat. They'll feel like, gosh, because they don't have the other leg to push off, all the work comes from this residual limb side and back down. One more time. Tighten push down into that towel roll or pile the foam roller hard, lift those hips up, three, two, one, and release. Now, all the exercises are in a very safe place for the patient where they're using their body weight as the weight to create a functional gait exercise. The third of our post-operative exercises is working those adductors. Remember, we wanna work the glutes or extenders and adductors, the opposite muscles from the, where we know the patient's gonna have a contracture problem. So we put a foam uh, roll or a towel roll or even a pillow between the residual limb and the sound limb, and all they're gonna do is squeeze that foam roller or that towel roll together. Not too hard, remember postoperatively, you're just trying to get them to activate the adductors so we don't get an abduction contracture. And relax. A little bit of addition to that to make it more specific is to have the patient squeeze into the towel slightly, turn your knees together, and press down into the towel like you're trying to push that towel down into the mat beneath you. Now what are you getting? You're getting her adductors, her internal rotators, and her extenders all at the same time. Three muscles she really needs for power and gait in the future. And this can start with just a motor activation exercise. Our next exercise is getting into prone positioning, really important for the patient. Many of our patients are going to be quite stiff because they spend a lot of time in supine in the bed. So getting them into a prone position is the closest thing to a rec standing that they can have. So whenever possible, you really want to encourage your patient, even if you have to start with bridge padding under the stomach, to get them into a prone position as much as possible. A great exercise from here is to have this patient just extend the knee into the towel roll and then press down hard enough to lift the hips off the mat. So the hip flexors are firing, the quads are firing, and getting that whole side up in the air. Then she relaxes and lets her hip come down, lets her knee bend, and completely go into a relaxed stretch position. Again, press down into the towel roll, lift the whole body weight off the mat with a big squeeze down into the towel roll, and then bring it back down, let it stretch, and let the hips stretch. Next exercise in prone, if the patient can advance to this, it's a little more difficult, is you take your towel roll, put it between the residual limb and the sound side, and they're going to squeeze that towel roll together and then lift as if they're trying to lift the, the towel off the mat. Just getting any lift of the knees is really going to kick in the glutes and the paraspinal muscles, really getting a good back and lower butt workout. And then relax and come all the way down. One more time, squeeze together and lift that towel roll off the mat. Three, two, one, and release, and come down. Perfect. 
Our next set of exercises is going to be with patients with bilateral amputation. A uh, couple factors that make it a little bit different, obviously, is stabilization, but the issue of the, the, it's important with all patients to have full hip range of motion, full extension range of motion. But for a bilateral patient, it's absolutely imperative. If a patient can't reach full hip extension, there's no way they can reach a resting posture, which means the energy cost of ambulation becomes extremely high. So really important right off the bat with all patients is working on things that are going to activate the glute muscles and relax or stretch the hip flexors. Whenever possible, getting those, those um, extensors or uh, glutes firing as much as possible. So in doing that, again, we can isolate one leg at a time, basically coming in here and having the patient work on the same basic premise of press down into the foam roller and lift those hips into the air, really feeling that glute activate strong and tight and come back down. Now, if the patient's just getting started and you're in the hospital, you don't have to do a full lift. Just have them tighten that butt muscle, and they don't actually lift off the mat at all. They're just getting that glute to fire. And it can be a much smaller, softer roll underneath. But very quickly, as much as possible, you want to tighten that thing, lift up as high as possible, get a really good lift off the mat, strong butt muscles, and good extensors of your hip, extension of the hip flexors, and then come on down. If you want to make that more challenging, the patient lifts the opposite leg up into the air, presses down into this, this roll, and tries to lift his hips completely off the mat with his other leg in the air. That's the power that you need as a bilateral above the knee amputee to be able to control the prosthetics and then rest in mid stance. One more time, if you don't mind, press down, lift up as high as possible. That's quite difficult, all the way down and relax. Now, you can alternately just switch sides Work the same individual exercise from this side. Press down and lift up. Excellent. And again, he's strong enough to go into a position where you press down and lift this guy up. Press down here and lift up and get the hips completely off the mat. All right? Now, if a patient's a little bit weaker, what you start with is just put the towel roll under both legs together and work on just a bridging exercise where he's going to tighten and lift up and get both hips up in the air but he's letting the legs help each other versus working individually. Again, a good exercise, just not as difficult. So it shows a progression here with a bilateral of fo focusing real importantly on those butt muscles and getting them firing and make sure he's got a whole and, and complete hip range of motion uh, into extension. Next exercise is working on putting that same foam roller between the legs, have the patient grab onto that foam roller, squeeze it, and then press it down into the mat. So he feels his backside muscles tightening. He's internally rotating his residual limbs and squeezing the towel roll together. And then relax, externally rotate, good. So he squeezes, turns in, and presses that roll down into the mat, down into the mat, getting his back muscles and butt muscles, everybody kicking in all the way up through. Again, what's the most common problem contracture-wise? Hip flexor contraction abduction, external rotation. So we're working on the patient from the very beginning on the opposite muscles, adduction, internal rotation, and extension. Our next exercise for the bilateral amputee is to make adduction exercise a little bit more aggressive. So and to do that, we bring in a, a stool, put his residual limb up on the stool, Remember that hip should be in full extension because that's maximizing, or neutral extension, I should say. That's putting him in the same position where the adductors are most functioning in the gait cycle. So we're going to have him then squeeze down into that towel roll and lift his hips up off the mat, really getting a more aggressive adduction exercise. And come back down. To make that more advanced, he simply brings his residual limb on the other side up to the bottom of the stool squeezes in here and tries to get those hips completely off the mat with holding that bottom leg up and come on down. That's the power needed to really control the prosthetic throughout the gait cycle and then be able to get into full extension and rest in neutral posture. Next exercise is looking at abductors or abductors. In this case, we're going to bring in our stool, Bring the top residual limb forward and just rest it on the stool so he has kind of a place to balance on. Perfect. Take our towel roll, put it underneath his residual limb, bringing the residual limb here into full extension. What Robert's going to do is press down into the towel roll and lift his hips up. Three, two, one, and relax. Again, 
His leg is in full or in neutral extension. That's again where you need the abductors for mid stance through the gait cycle. And he's firing that abductor and really grading power to lift to the top and relax and come down. If you want to make this an advanced level exercise, he brings the leg down, moves the stool out of the way, holds himself in a neutral posture, press down into the towel roll and lift his whole body up in the air without any support from the other residual limb. And then come on down. The last couple exercises important for the bilateral amputee are from all in a prone position. Now prone, really important for the patient. This is a position that is most like erect standing, puts him into full extension positioning. Again, many of your patients are gonna struggle with this because they're tight in the hip flexors. If a bilateral amputee is gonna be a successful ambulator without an assistive device or at the community level or without extreme energy cost, they're gonna to have to have full hip extension range. So getting them in this position unto itself is an exercise. And you need to spend as much time in this position as possible so that he can become or get to a rest position. Remember, we have large ligaments in the front of the hip. If he can get his hip into full extension, he can rest on those ligaments, save energy for walking around. The increased energy cost it's gonna to take to walk as a bilateral amputee. From this position, an exercise is to have him lift that residual limb up in this position, press down into that residual limb, lift the hip up off the mat, really work in that hip flexor on this side, come all the way down and relax and let that hip drop all the way down to the mat. That way he's really getting a good full hip extension stretch. So he's going into hyperextension of the hip, really, really important for the above knee, especially the bilateral above knee amputee, and this has to start early. If a patient's struggling, you can have them put both the residual limbs on the same towel roll and basically press down in and lift those hips up so the legs work together and then come all the way down and stretch both hips together. But whenever possible, you wanna separate that out one leg at a time so each leg gains as much strength, power, and range as it possibly can. This exercise is again going from the prone position taking our towel roll, putting it between the residual limbs, ask the patient to grip that towel roll, and then try to lift it off the mat. So he's creating extension, butt muscles, low back muscles really firing, full extension that he has, and great power from that position, and relax. Again, no patient starts doing it this well. It is something that really takes a lot of work and effort to get up to have the strength and the mobility to be able to squeeze that towel roll and lift it off the mat, really kicking those back muscles and butt muscles into the best possible strength position that they can achieve. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you found this helpful. This video is part of a series on prosthetic interventions, ranging from managing the residual limb after amputation to running with a prosthesis. We encourage you to view our other videos in this series and to share them as well. You can find them on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash missiongate. To stay up to date on our latest content, click the link in the corner and subscribe and be sure to like and share this video.